I'm the calculus professor and today I'll be talking to you about calculus and polar coordinates. In problem number 23, we'd like to make a sketch of the region inside the curve r equals 8 sine theta and then find the area of that region. Okay, so uh, let's start out by drawing our x and y axis. And r equals 8 sine of theta. If that 8 were not there and I just have r equals sine of theta, that is a circle of diameter 1 uh, that is sitting just right on top of the x-axis. Okay, so it's tangent to the x-axis. What does this 8 do? It just stretches it, so instead of it having diameter 1, it has diameter 8. So this is what we're looking at here when we look at r equals 8 sine of theta. We have this circle sitting on top of that's tangent to the x-axis, and this is up at 8. So it has diameter 8, radius 4. Okay, so we just have this circle sitting up on top of the x-axis, and we'd like to find the area of the region. Now, of course, uh, if I know that this is a circle and it has radius 4, I suppose I could calculate really quick because I know that area of a circle is pi r squared, the radius is 4, so we should have like 16 pi as the answer. But just for good practice, how would I do this using integration if I wasn't exactly sure that that was a circle? So let's go through it and see how we would do it. So the area in this case would be equal to the integral. Well, this starts at angle zero and then starts taking area until it gets to pi. So I would integrate this from zero to pi. But again, if I can make this easier on myself, why not? And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to integrate from zero to pi over two, and then I'm going to double it. Okay, so I'm going to integrate this thing from zero to pi over two, and then I'm going to double that amount. Okay, so what goes inside? Inside goes, uh, I put in one half of r squared. So this is one half of r, but r is eight sine of theta. So eight sine theta quantity squared d theta. So right off the bat, we have a two, we have a one half, those cancel and I'm left with integral from 0 to pi over 2 of, uh, if I square the 8, I get a 64, and if I square the sine of theta, I get sine squared theta d theta. Okay, I don't know how to take the antiderivative of sine squared of theta, so I need to use a half angle identity on sine squared of theta. So let's rewrite that using the half angle identity. So I'll pull the constant 64 outside of the integral. And now I have integral 0 to pi over 2 of sine squared of theta. But sine squared of theta is the same thing as 1 minus cosine of 2 theta divided by 2 d theta. All right, let's keep going. Uh, I'm going to move over here. So now we have, um, notice I have a 1 half multiplied by this 1 minus cosine 2 theta. I could pull the 2 out. If I pull the 2 out, I'm left with 32 integral from 0 to pi over 2 of 1 minus cosine of 2 theta d theta. Now I'm ready to take an antiderivative. I still have this 32. I take an antiderivative. Antiderivative of 1 is theta. Antiderivative of negative cosine of 2 theta would be minus sine 
of 2 theta divided by 2, all of that evaluated from 0 to pi over 2. Okay, now let's plug in our pi over 2. I get 32 times, plug in pi over 2 for theta, I get pi over 2 minus, plug in pi over 2 for theta, and I get sine of pi. Sine of pi is 0, and 0 divided by 2 is still 0. So I get pi over 2 minus 0 minus, now plug in 0, I get 0 minus sine of 0 over 2. Sine of 0 is 0, and so we've got everything. And all that we're left with is 32 times pi over 2, which is 16 pi, which is exactly what we said it should be if this is in fact a circle of radius four. The area of the region should be 16 pi, and we're done.